Hi there, this is A-Level Physics, Work, Power and Efficiency. So the objectives are to recall and apply the equations for power and efficiency and to answer exam style questions which will also incorporate gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So power. Power is the rate of transfer of energy. As an equation, it's power is energy divided by time. It's measured in watts. And it's a scalar quantity. The other unit for power, if we look here, is energy divided by time, so joules per second. So, for example, if you add 100 watts, the equivalent is 100 joules per second. So, power, obviously, is also the rate of doing work, work done over time. So question one, we're going to calculate the power of an electric motor that lifts a mass of 500 kilograms upwards by three meters in 20 seconds. So if you want to have a go at this, just pause the video and then I'll show you how to answer it. So power is equal to energy or work done over time. And this motor is lifting a mass. So the energy that's gained is the gravitational potential energy. So the power is equal to the, the energy gained MGH divided by time taken T. So then we just need to put our numbers in. So it's 500 kilograms multiplied by 9.8. Feel free to use 9.81 if you wish. It's not a problem. Multiplied by the height of three meters and then divide by the time taken 20 seconds. And if you put that in your calculator, that'll give us the answer. And the answer is 735 watts or joules per second. Okay, let's move on. Question two. Calculate the power of a car engine that exerts a force of 40 kilonewtons over a distance of 30 meters for 15 seconds. If you want to have a go at this, please do now. And then I'll show you how to do it. So for this question, power, again, is work done or energy over time. Then we just need to identify how to get the energy. So... It will be work done, which is force times distance. So force times distance divided by time. Then just put the numbers in. So 40 kilonewtons is 40,000. Multiplied by the distance of 30 meters. Divided by 15 seconds. Put that on our calculator. And we get 80,000 watts. Or 8 times 10 to the power of 4 watts. Now let's move on. So if you want to complete this table, just pause the video and then I'll show you the answers. So if energy transfer is 600 joules, the work done is also 600 joules. Because they're essentially the same thing. Now power, power is energy divided by time. So the power would be the 600 divided by the amount of time in two minutes, which is 120 seconds, which gives five watts. So next one, number two. So energy transfer is 440 joules. So the work done is also 440 joules. Then we just need to calculate for time. Time is equal to energy divided by power. So it'd be 440 divided by 22, put that on our calculator, and we get a time equal to 20 seconds. Next one, so work done or energy transfer is equal to power times time. So we need to just multiply the two hours and the four watts together, but we just need to convert the two hours into seconds. So an hour will be 60 minutes times 60 seconds, which is 3,600. And then we need to times that by two hours. So the amount of time in two hours is 7,200 seconds. Then we just need to multiply it by four to give us 28,800 joules. And the energy transfer is obviously the same. 
So this one, energy transfer is also 2.5 millijoules. Remember, milli is times 10 to the minus 3. And micro is times 10 to the minus 6. So let's look at this one. Power for the bottom one is energy over time. So the energy is 2.5 millijoules, which is 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 3, divided by the time, which is 50 microseconds. So 50 times 10 to the minus 6. We put that on our calculator and we get a power of 50 watts. Okay, that's that done. Hopefully that went okay. Let's move on. Power and velocity. So power is work done over time. But work is force times displacement or the force times distance equation. And we can combine them to give power equals force times displacement over time. And obviously displacement over time is equal to velocity. So therefore we get an equation power is force times velocity. P equals FV. I'm going to pause this, take some notes. You don't need to know where the equation comes from, but you will need the equation P equals FV. So here's a question. If you want to answer it, just pause, and then I'll show you what to do. So the question is, calculate the power of a car that maintains a constant speed of 40 metres a second against air resistance forces of 3.5 newtons. As the car is travelling at a constant speed, the car's engine must be exerting a force equal to the opposing air resistance forces. This is just Newton's second law. The car maintains a constant speed because the forces on the car, acting on the car and the air resistance are equal and opposite, giving a resultant force of zero, which means the car will not accelerate or decelerate. So we can simply use the equation. P equals FV. So the force is 3.5 kilonewtons, which is 3,500 newtons, multiplied by a velocity of 40 seconds, sorry, 40 meters per second. Put that in our calculator, that gives us 140 kilowatts. Let's move on. So efficiency is a measure of how useful or how usefully energy is used by a device. Efficiency, this is from GCSE, is useful energy transferred or useful power divided by total energy supplied or the total power supplied. Useful energy can never be greater than the energy supplied, so the maximum possible efficiency is 1.0. Although that never happens, it's always a decimal less than 1. But if you ever end up with a number greater than 1, it's definitely wrong. So here's an efficiency question. If you want to pause the video and have a go, and then I'll show you how to do it. So the question is, calculate the input power, or the, or the total power, of an electric motor that lifts a mass of 1,000 kilograms upwards by 3 meters in 20 seconds. The motor has an efficiency of 60%. So we want input power. So what we need to do, first of all, is figure out the the amount of energy it gains as it's lifted to give us the power. So the power that's usefully transferred is energy over time. So energy is MGH. Over time. So the mass is a thousand kilograms. G is 9.81. The height is three meters. Divided by time, 20 seconds. So we put that on our calculator. That'll give us the power. Which is 1,471.5 watts. So that's the useful power. But we need the, the total input power. So efficiency. I'll try F. Is useful power. Divided by total power. So the efficiency is 60%. So that's actually 0 0.6. We need it as a decimal. Equals the useful. So the useful power is 
147.5 divided by the total. So to get the total, we need to do 1,471.5 divided by 0 0.6, which gives us a total power for the device, the input power, of 2,452.5. So we'll round that to approximately 2.5 kilowatts for this example. If you wrote 2,450, that's okay. If you wrote 2,453, that's also okay. Right, let's move on. Hopefully that went okay. Efficiency question two. So if you want to have a go at this, please do. And then I'll show you how to do it. So this is kind of the reverse of the one that we've just done. So an electric motor has an input power of 1,750. So this time we've got the total power. It raises 150 kilogram mass at 0 0.75 meters per second. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can just use power equals force times velocity. P equals FV. And the force will be to overcome the weight. So we just need to do 150 times 9.81. So power would be the force, which is 150 times 9.81 to give us the weight. Multiplied by the velocity of 0 0.75 seconds. So that will give us the useful power, which is 1,104 watts. So to get the efficiency, we just do the useful divided by the total. So we can just do the 1,104 divided by the total 1,750. And if we times that by 100, it gives us an efficiency of 63%. Okay, let's move on. So here's an exam style question. If you want to have a go at it, please pause. So a grand piano falls from a cargo plane in a terrible accident. It has a speed of 162 kilometers per hour after falling 180 meters. So then what we need to do is calculate the loss of gravitational potential energy the gain in kinetic energy, the work done against air resistance, and the average resistive force acting on the piano. And one thing that I forgot to put on, sorry, apologies. We can write down that the mass of this piano is 150 kilograms. So let's move on. I'm going to write the mass up here. I'm going to show you how to do this. 150 kilos. So the loss of GPE is simply MGH. So MGH. So the mass is 150 times the gravitational field strength on Earth, which is 9.81, multiplied by the height of force, so 180 meters. Put that in your calculator. Gives 264 870 joules. We're going to use the full number as we need to use it further into the question. The gain in kinetic energy. So the gain in kinetic energy would be half mv squared. So we need to do 0 0.5 multiplied by the mass of 150 kilograms. Multiplied by the speed squared. Now the speed is 162 kilometers per hour. In a previous video, I showed you how to convert this into meters per second. So it would be 162,000 meters divided by 3,600 seconds. Or if you remembered, you can just divide by 3.6, which gives us 45 meters per second. And then we just need to square that. And that gives us 151,000. 875 joules. So the work done against air resistance is the, the difference between them. So the, the loss of GPE has converted into kinetic energy and thermal energy. And the thermal energy has been dissipated to the surroundings. So the work done against the air resistance is the difference between these two values. So if we subtract these values, the work done against air resistance 
is simply 112,995 joules. So the average resistive force acting on the piano due to this work done against air resistance. So work done is force times distance. So to get the resistive force, we do the work done, which is the value we just figured out, divided by the distance of 180 meters. So to get the force, it's 112, 995, divided by 180 meters. And that will give us the force that's acting on the piano which is 628 newtons. Right, I hope that went well. Thanks for watching.